Welcome to Enter the Unknown. My name is FJ and we're back today for the second episode of our fourth random card challenge. I've been reliably informed that this isn't Pokemon Emerald, so I guess we're calling this a Pokemon Platinum series for the time being. After picking up the Coal Badge in the first episode, we can move on to Floroma Town and head through to Valley Windworks. Prior to drawing a team for our face-off with Mars, we have to add the middle tier of cards. The group we're adding features all of the available Pokemon with base stat totals between 351 and 450. Mars's Perugly has a base stat total of 452, so keeping to just the weakest Pokemon could have made this incredibly tough. This group mostly features second stage Pokemon and weaker fully evolved Pokemon. Alright, let's see what team we'll be using for our first battle of the episode. Against Mars, we'll be using the duo of Gloom and Dugtrio. That's a pretty solid team for this one. The typings aren't the best, but with an average base stat total of exactly 400, we should at least have the power required to get over the line. Let's have a look at what moves we'll have at our disposal. Up first, we've got Dignum the Dugtrio at level 17, and his moveset's made up of Scratch, Sand Attack, Magnitude, and Night Slash. Datura the Glooms at level 15, and he's equipped with Absorb, Stun Spore, Poison Powder, and Acid. Our team's stab moves will be almost completely useless against Zubat, but other than that, we're well set up. Let's get into it. The Team Galactic Commander leads off with their Zubat, and we start out with Dugtrio. We call for Scratch, but I'm really not sure why, and Zubat fires back with Toxic. I think I must have thought Dark was not very effective or something, because instead of Night Slash, we go for Scratch again. It's not enough to score the knockout, so Zubat lands a bite before the poison chips away even more damage. One final stupidly chosen Scratch finishes off Zubat, but we've probably taken more damage than was necessary. Mar sends in her Perugly, and after a fake out forces Dignum to flinch, the speedy ground type sends some sand into her eyes. Perugly's eyes, not Mars's. Faint Attack knocks out Doug Trio to take us into a one-on-one, -on -one, so here's hoping that accuracy drop pays off. Gloom enters the battle and after being hit by Scratch, sends a Poison Powder off target. That's more or less cancelled out when on the next turn, Perugly swipes at nothing while Poison Powder lands. Another Scratch from Perugly hits its mark as Datura counters with Absorb. Sand Attack pays off again as Perugly misses and we make it count by landing an Acid. The Cat wolves down an Orenberry before striking with a beefed up Scratch that leaves Gloom with only two hit points remaining. Acid connects once more to take Perugly down to about 1 HP, and the Poison finishes her off to hand us the win. That was probably closer than it needed to be. I think Dugtrio likely would have got a hit in against Perugly if I had just used Night Slash on Zubat. My general incompetence often plays into the difficulty of the battles though, so nothing new there. Now that we're done in Valley Windworks, we can move on to Eterna City for our second gym battle. Gardenia uses a team of three, so let's draw cards to see who we'll be using against her. For the second Sinnoh Gym Battle, we'll be using the trio of Barboach, Ivysaur, and Charmeleon. Well, that went from just about the worst possible option to one of the best. Barboach is quad weak to Gardenia's grass types, where Charmeleon's one of the strongest options we could have drawn. To make things nice and even, Ivysaur falls somewhere in the middle of the spectrum. Let's check out our movesets. Sapo the Ivysaur is up first at level 20 with the moves Razor Leaf, Leech Seed, Poison Powder, and Sleep Powder. The Evolved Grass starter doesn't learn any poison attacks by level up, so this was about as good as we could do. Next up, we've got Kez the Barboach, also at 20, and he's got Mud Bomb, Amnesia, Water Gun, and Mud Slap. I'm not sure there's a lot he can do, but he'll certainly give his all. Finally, we've got Karma the Charmeleon, who's a couple of levels higher at 22, and Scratch, Smokescreen, Dragon Rage, and Ember make up his moveset. Like having Sonic Boom in our battle with Rourke, access to Dragon Rage here is a massive help. Let's get into the battle. Gardenia starts off with her Turtwig, and we send out Ivysaur first. Sapo's Poison Powder connects to leave Turtwig poisoned as Gardenia calls for the starter to set up a Reflect. To continue on with the theme of today, I then called for Leech Seed, which obviously does not affect Grass types. That lets Turtwig get off a free Razor Leaf, but it does about the same amount of damage as our attempted Leech Seed. Going back and forth with Razor Leaf seems a bit tedious, so after a sunny day from Turtwig, we recall Ivysaur and send out Charmeleon. Another ineffective blast of leaves land before a powered up ember blows Turtwig away. It's probably unnecessary, but after taking down Gardenia's first Pokemon, we switch out Charmeleon for Barboach. After firing wide with Mud Bomb, Kez is absolutely annihilated by a magical leaf, so good try. We call on Charmeleon once more as the sunlight fades and instruct him to use Dragon Rage. After cutting away 40 HP from Cherim, Gardenia calls for magical leaf once again. It's still not very effective, so another Dragon Rage takes the Eterna Gym Leader down to 1. Gardenia sends out her Roserade last, and we make another switch, sending Ivysaur back into battle. 
Stunspore paralyzes him on entry, which pins him down for a couple of turns as Roserade attacks with Poison Sting. Eventually, Sapo breaks through paralysis to land a sleep powder, and we recall him to send out Charmeleon once more. While Roserade sleeps, Karma scores a hit with Ember, forcing her to sleepy to Citrus Berry. We call for Dragon Rage, and Roserade just about lives the hit in red health. Gardenia uses a super potion on her ace, who's then too busy recovering to dodge either of Charmeleon's Dragon Rage attacks. That earns us a fairly easy win and the Forest Badge. Having added a second badge to our case, we can then head to the Team Galactic building in Eterna City. There's another Galactic Commander waiting for us there, and we're gonna need a team of two to take her on. Jupiter has a Scum Tank on her team, and with a base stat total of 479, we're gonna need another strong duo. Alright, it looks like we'll be using Bulbasaur and Lilip. That's not good. A couple of partial grass types against Jupiter's poison types isn't ideal to start with, but we've got a massive statistical disadvantage to go along with it. Let's see what moves we'll be using. Up first we've got Karin the Lilip, who's at level 23, and her moveset's made up of Rock Tomb, Amnesia, Ingrain, and Confuse Ray. As with Mars, I don't think Zubat will be any problem, but Scum Tank will definitely be an issue. Next up, we've got Bufo the Bulbasaur, who's at level 21, and he's got Takedown, Leech Seed, Poison Powder, and Sleep Powder. We're gonna need to make use of status moves here, because letting Skuntank attack freely is a surefire way to lose this quickly. Alright, let's give this a go. The battle gets going with Jupiter Zubat facing off against our Leap. On Jupiter's command, Zubat swoops down to land a wing attack that Karin brushes off to counter with Rock Tomb. The large stones pile up on top of Zubat, who's just able to make it out before another Rock Tomb crushes her. Well, that was nice and easy, but Skuntang's up next. A smokescreen lowers Karin's accuracy, but she still manages to connect with Confuse Ray. With Skuntang confused, we recall the leap to send in Bulbasaur for the first time. On entry, the Poison Skunk breaks through Confusion to land a Night Slash, which takes Bufo below half health. Before even having the chance to attempt Sleep Powder, Bulbasaur is hit by another Night Slash after Skuntang snaps out of Confusion. That did not go well. We send the leap back in, and Jupiter calls for Screech as we get back to work with another Confuse Ray. It connects, but this time around it actually pays off with Skuntank hitting herself in confusion. Karin follows up with a Rock Tomb that does a disappointingly small amount of damage. The battle runs until Skuntank snaps out of confusion again and lands a Night Slash which leaves the leap below half health. Rock Tomb does ultimately force Skuntank to consume her Citrus Berry, but that's as far as it goes. With lowered accuracy from Smokescreen, Karin really can't do much. Skuntank's Night Slash knocks off the leap to hand Jupiter a fairly routine win. Alright, I'm really not sure how it's going to work out, but to avoid having to switch, we're going to lead off with Bulbasaur this time. Bufo starts things in style, putting Zubat right to sleep with Sleep Powder. From there, a couple of takedowns knock off the Poison Bat to hand us an early advantage. Once again, that went well. The recoil damage only chipped away 12 HP from Bulbasaur too, so we're in good shape. When Jupiter sends out her Scum Tank, she starts out the same way as last time, calling for Smokescreen. It can't hold back Bulbasaur though, whose Sleep Powder makes contact once more, putting Skuntank right to sleep. We switch out to Leap, who's free to use Confuse Ray and Ingrain before her opponent wakes up. Unfortunately, Skuntank breaks through Confusion on Awakening to poison Karin. Rock Tomb doesn't deal too much damage, but before Night Slash knocks out Leap, she's able to whittle Skuntank down to around a quarter health. Bulbasaur returns to battle, and thanks to Rock Tomb, he's fast enough to land the first blow. Bufo's takedown hits nothing though, so Skuntank's Night Slash lands first. Bulbasaur darts back and goes for takedown again, and misses once more. There weren't even any smoke screens in play there, Bufo just missed back to back takedowns without any help. Okay, we got a bit unlucky there, so let's give this another go to see if we can get it over the line. We get things going with Zubat taking on Bulbasaur, and it's a shot for shot remake of the last attempt. Sleep Powder has Zubat counting Marie before a couple of blows of takedown knock her out, leaving Bufo with 44 HP. When Skuntank's sent in, an immediate Night Slash leaves Bulbasaur just above red health before his Sleep Powder finds another victim. Bufo's takedown slams the sleeping Skuntank, and a critical hit leaves her below half health. The recoil almost finishes off Bulbasaur, who strikes Skuntank again after she eats her Citrus Berry. Bufo's knocked out by recoil damage, but he's taken down Zubat and left Skuntank weak and sleeping, so that's one hell of an effort. Lilip enters the battle and sends the Rock Tomb crashing down on top of Skuntank. 
Dad wakes up Jupiter's ace who fills the room with smoke, but it can't stop Corrin from confusing her with Confuse Ray. Screech lowers the leap's defense before a rock tomb slams down a few feet from Skunk Tank. Breaking through confusion, the Skunk then lands a Night Slash before Corrin fails to connect with Rock Tomb once again. Another Night Slash leaves the leap in one shot range, which wakes her up enough to force a successful Rock Tomb. That's the final attack necessary to drop Skun Tank's speed below the leaps. That means Karin can move first, so she drops another pile of rocks down on top of the Skunk, knocking her out to hand us the win. That's now the bar for the series. It took around 30 attempts, although in fairness, a lot of them were just immediate resets after missing Sleep Powder with Bulbasaur. That completes our job in Eterna City, so we can move on to Heart Home for our next gym battle. The gym leader Fantina uses a team of three, and prior to taking her on, we'll be mixing the top cards into the pile. That's any Pokemon with a base stat total of more than 450. From here on out, most of our opponents will have at least one top Pokemon, so having the possibility to draw some good ones ourselves should even things out. I sorta of wanted to split the stacks up over the first three episodes though, so we'll be getting going with the Fantina battle in the next episode. For now, we've earned our second gym batch and struggled past a couple of Galactic Commanders, so let's call that a mildly successful episode. If you stuck around, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.